This proved to be the last of 20 entries or so. It will be seen from them that for all the devil's inventiveness, the scheme remained daily the same. First he would tempt me, and then thwart me, leaving me with a dull pain in the very root of my being. I knew exactly what I wanted to do, and how to do it without impinging on a child's chastity. After all, I had had some experience in my life of, pe of pederosis, had visually possessed the dappled nymphs in parks, had wedged my weary and bestial way into the hottest, most crowded corner of a city bus full of strap-hanging school children. But for almost three weeks, I had, be I had been interrupted in all my pathetic machinations. The agent of these interruptions was usually the Hayes woman, who, as the reader will mark, was more afraid of Lowe's deriving some pleasure for me, from me than of my enjoying Low. The passion I had developed for that nymphet, for the first nymphet in my life that could be reached at last by my awkward, aching, timid claws, would have certainly landed me again in a sanatorium had not the devil realized that I was to be granted some relief if he, wa if he wanted to have me as a plaything for some time longer. The reader has also marked the curious mirage of the lake. It would have been logical on the part of Aubrey McFate, as I would like to dub that devil of mine, to arrange a small treat for me on the promised beach in the presumed forest. Actually, the promise Mrs. Hayes had made was a fraudulent one. She had not told me that Mary Rose Hamilton, a dark little beauty in her own right, was to come too, and that the two nymphets would be whispering apart and playing apart and having a good time all by themselves while Mrs. Hayes and her handsome lodger conversed sedately in the semi-nude from, from prying eyes. Incidentally, eyes did pry and tongues did wag. How queer life is. We hastened to alienate the very fates we intended to woo. Before my actual arrival, my landlady had planned to have an old spinster, a Miss Phelan, whose mother had been cook in Mrs. Hayes's family, come to stay in the house with Lolita and me, while Mrs. Hayes, a career girl, girl at heart, sought some suitable job in the nearest city. Mrs. Hayes had seen the whole situation very clearly, the bespectacled, round-backed Herr Humbert coming with his Central European trunks to gather dust in his corner behind a leap of old books. The unloved, ugly, ugly little daughter, firmly supervised by Miss Phelan, who had already once had my low under her buzzard wing. Low recalled that 1944 summer with an indignant shudder. And Mrs. Hayes herself engaged as a receptionist in a great elegant city. But a not too complicated event interfered with that program. Miss Phelan broke her hip in Savannah on the very day I arrived in Ramsdale.